Hi guys, it's Rachel Sarnoff with Mommy Greenest and I'm here with Josh Castella and um, of Safe Ducky. This is the coolest new thing. So I wanted to get a quick um, sort of update from Josh on what you've been doing and we're here at Caro Bambino in Santa Monica which is going to be a Safe Ducky store, right? So we hope, um, yep. yeah, we, we hope. So so um, Josh is very tall, so he is helping me by bending his <laughs> knees, but if I lose him in the frame, um, leave me some comments below because you can tell me what a crappy uh, video person I am. Anyway, so Josh, so tell me how you started Safe Ducky and tell me, you know, where did it come from? Like, it's such a great idea. Tell us, tell us about what it is. Thanks, yeah, so I started off by, I used to work in Asia for uh -huh. a lot of the companies that make consumer products. And during that experience, I came to understand the risks that a lot of our products have as far as toxic chemicals and how much improvement we need to make sure that they don't end up on our store shelves. Yes, or in our homes. Right? In our homes, oh, yeah, eventually, yeah. exactly. And so, you're specifically focusing on children's products, right? Products for babies and kids? Yeah, so yeah. what I do is I adopt the legal standard. I'm not really pushing my own standard. And in America, um, most of the regulation on products happens for kids. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we were talking a little bit, and you guys know because I talk about this all the time, but um, you know how little regulation there really is. But really with children's products, I think it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the challenge is less with regulation because we have fairly good regulations mm -hmm. and more about products kind of slipping through that are kind of offenders in terms of toxic chemicals but the companies may not even know, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the problem really lies when you hire another company to make your products. I okay. mean, you're talking about thousands or tens of thousands of products. There's a million different ways of how a toxic chemical can sneak their way in. So it, in most cases, it's not deliberate, uh -huh. but um, what we want to do is a focus safety on the end of the supply chain when the products actually get here rather than limited testing offshore okay and by taking that approach we're able to capture is, uh, issues with products before they actually are taken home so you typically work with men with um, retailers right but are mm -hmm. you planning on working with manufacturers at all are you what are your what are yeah. your goals well actually manufacturers are a big part of the program so uh -huh. I start off working with retailers and we take a look at their products and when we find a problem I work collaboratively with them to contact the manufacturers to find to investigate the issue and solve it so oh, we're solving great. it not just for this store but for every product out there and most manufacturers are really receptive they aren't necessarily putting the toxic chemical there um, on purpose, but when they find out, they're just as uh, surprised as we are as when they want to find out and get yeah. rid of it. And also you're working individual, individually with families, right? So you're going to people's homes. And yeah. um, so I asked Josh, Josh told me the story already, but I wanted to tell you guys because it kind of freaked me out. So yesterday, tell me, tell right. me what happened yesterday. <laughs> so yesterday while the, everyone was watching football, I went in there and I did some screening uh -huh. and uh, I found a jacket that uh, had buttons that unfortunately had lead levels 5,000 times the legal limit. That's and, crazy. And, and Safe Ducky's really been getting started this summer and what we found over this summer is that in most places we look, we do find these types of products. So they're out there. Um, the mother didn't really know how to react, but I think it proved, it, proved, it proved that there is an issue out there. And of course, they're grateful to know that this toxic product is no longer hanging in their closet. Right, right. So then um, what would be the next step? Obviously, the mom has to dispose of that as toxic waste, right? She can't she can't give it to Goodwill and she can't throw it in the trash because well, it's yeah. lead. So what happens? Well, there's, there's, there's toxic waste laws. I think throwing away a little bit of lead is okay, but yeah, I'll have to follow up on that, but you're and, right. And then do you contact the manufacturer and say, look, we found this? Yes. Okay, that's great. And so you have a very sophisticated machine, which you guys, I'm gonna take some pictures of and, and we'll show you guys, but you have a very sophisticated machine that tests for lead. What else does it test for? So the machine, I'm using two machines today. Uh -huh. One of them is called an XRF machine, which uh -huh. uh, most people I think are familiar with. It uses x-rays and it analyzes what's bounced back and it'll tell you right away um, what kind of heavy metals you have in there. You can look for chlorine, bromine, arsenic, things like that. Okay. Um, for regulation in America, we're looking specifically for things like lead, cadmium, arsenic, and things like that. Right. Um, another machine that we're using is called an FTIR machine, and that actually looks for phthalates and plastics, and that uses infrared, similar to the machine that looks for bombs in an airport. Okay, so I don't have a machine, <laughs> and yet I have three children, so if I am watching this, um, you know, like, what would your recommendations be to, for me to kind of 
close the loop on some of the products in my house, do you have any takeaways for, for people who are watching? Yeah, unfortunately, toxic chemicals can show up anywhere. So I can't give you any sort of general um, guidelines. Uh, obviously, wood or natural made or organic products is a step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, being involved in Safe Ducky, going to Safe Ducky member stores, we have seven in Los Angeles right now. We're working on making more. Um, we're also doing uh, home inspections and things like that. There really isn't anything better than actually getting a real-time picture of what's in the product as you're holding it in your hand. Mm -hmm. And that's what we can offer. But other than that, it's really just about being educated, do some research on the companies that you're buying from, um, and making sure that they're aware of your concerns as okay. well. So Don't just trust ducky. the label, though. That's what we're doing right. right now. And I think that's kind of you know, what Mommy Greenest is all about too. You know, you mm -hmm. really have to do your own research and the really challenge good. I think lies in um, in what type of information is available to us because what I think you're showing us and I think this is true, we find this across many industries, is that what we read on a label or what we research isn't necessarily tr the truth and, and the manufacturer may not even know, right? So yeah. I think, you know, Cloth, local, organic, wood in terms of children's products, um, you know, organic in terms of what we're putting on our skin for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then you guys check out safeducky.com. Um, yep. Great resource, and I'm excited to see, you know, what you guys end up doing with um, transforming how we get things on our shelves and get things off of our shelves. So definitely check out Safe Ducky. And then on Twitter, are you guys Safe Ducky? At Safe Ducky? We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, and we've got Instagram going on as well. Awesome. So, All right, so there. check them out. Thank you so much for taking the time, tall Josh. <laughs> and we will see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.